In this video, we're going to look at some of the naming rules that allow us to identify and name ionic compounds. The good news is that the naming of ionic compounds is reasonably straightforward. We simply write the name of the cation first, followed by the name of the anion. The names for the cations and anions are independent of each other, which means that the name of the cation does not depend on which anion is present, and conversely, the name of the anion does not depend on which cation is present. So the naming of ionic compound simply therefore involves knowing how to name the individual ions. We'll start with the cations first, and specifically the naming of monatomic cations. So let's just remind ourselves that cations are positively charged ions, typically derived from metals, which we call metal ions. The monatomic aspect of it means that there is a single atom involved, and we'll see that the name of the ion is derived directly from the name of the metal. So for example, we've got two ions here, the Na plus ion. Na plus is derived from the sodium metal, and so the name of the ion is simply the sodium ion and the Al3 plus ion derived from the metal aluminium is named the aluminium ion. It gets slightly more complex with some other metals. For example, the Cu2 plus ion is known as the copper 2 ion, and the CO3 plus ion is known as the cobalt 3 ion. Both of these ions have Roman numerals in brackets to identify the charge on the ion. So already we can see that in terms of naming monatomic cations, there are at least two types, and we actually label them type 1 metal cations and type 2 metal cations. Type 1 metal cations are derived from metals that form only one ion. The ion can only have one charge, and sodium and aluminium are examples of type 1 metal cations. Type 2 metal cations are derived from metals that can form multiple charges that need to be identified with a Roman numeral label to identify the charge. For example, copper can form both the copper 1 and copper 2 ions, and cobalt can form both the cobalt 2 and cobalt 3 ions. Let's look at the type 1 metal cations first. This diagram shows the position of metals in the periodic table that form type 1 metal cations. The names of these ions is taken directly from the name of the metal, and the charge on these cations can be predicted directly from their position on the periodic table. For example, all the group 1 or group 1A metal cations have one plus charge, and the name of these ions are, from top to bottom, the lithium ion, the sodium ion, the potassium ion, the rubidium ion, and the cesium ion. These group 2 or group 2A metal cations all have a 2 plus charge and their names are the magnesium ion, the calcium ion, the strontium ion and the barium ion. These group 13 or group 3A metals have a 3 plus charge and they're simply known as the aluminium ion and the gallium ion. Metal ions derived from group 1A, group 2A and group 3A have the charge of 1 plus, 2 plus and 3 plus respectively. So using the old naming conventions for the group names is still very useful for us. And it even works for some metals in the middle part of the periodic table where we see these type 1 metal cations taking on the charge indicated by their old group name. For example, the zinc 2 plus ion and the cadmium 2 plus ion are derived from metals in group 2B and the Ag1 plus ion is derived from silver, which lies in group 1b. And because these ions are type 1 metal ions, they take their name directly from the name of the parent metal, so these ions are called the zinc ion, the cadmium ion, and the silver ion, respectively. Type 2 metal cations, as I've said, are derived from metals that can form more than one stable ion, each with a different charge, which is not the case for type 1 metals, which can only form one stable ion. And in terms of locating them on the periodic table, type 2 ions are typically derived from transition metals in the middle part of the periodic table, the so-called D block, and the lower half of the P block metals. This table shows some of the more common type 2 metal cations in alphabetical order, starting with the Cr2 plus cation and the Cr3 plus cation. Two different cations derived from the element chromium when chromium loses two electrons and three electrons respectively. And because there are two different chromium ions, we need to name them differently using the Roman numeral convention, which allows us to identify the charge on the cation. So the Cr2 plus ion is named chromium 2, and the Cr3 plus ion is named chromium 3. Similarly, the Pb2 plus ion and the Pb4 plus ion are named lead 2 and lead 4, respectively, and so on through the table.
If we consider another pair of type 2 cations, the copper 1 and copper 2 ions, we can see the importance of naming the ions with the correct Roman numeral. For example, copper can form two different ionic compounds with the chloride ion, namely CuCl and CuCl2. CuCl contains the copper 1 ion and the compound is therefore named copper 1 chloride. CuCl2 contains the copper 2 ion and is therefore named copper 2 chloride. We'll switch our attention to the naming of anions and we'll start with the monatomic anions first. A reminder that anions are negatively charged ions and that monatomic anions only have one atom associated with them. We can predict the charge on some anions based on the position of the parent element in the periodic table. We see, for example, all of these ions are derived from the halogen group of elements in group 17 and all are one minus ions. These ions are derived from the group 16 calcogens and they are two minus ions. And we can see nitrogen is a three minus ion. We can predict the charge on these anions because the parent elements are in groups that are one in from the noble gases for the one minus ions, two in from the noble gases for the two minus ions, and three in from the noble gases for the three minus nitride ion. In terms of naming these monatomic anions, we name them using the stem of the element name and then we change the ending to an eyed ending. So we can see here we've got bromine, chlorine, oxygen, sulfur, all change to an eyed ending to end up with bromide, chloride, oxide and sulfide. So taking the stem of the name of each element, we see that the anion derived from bromine is named bromide. The anion derived from chlorine becomes chloride. The anion derived from oxygen is the oxide ion and the anion derived from sulfur is the sulfide ion. So we've just changed the ending of the element to have the eyed ending for these monatomic anions. Of course, there's not just monatomic ions around. Whether they are cations or anions, there are a lot of polyatomic ions, ions that contain more than one atom. And at this stage, we simply have to remember the names of some of the more important ones listed on this table, including the carbonate ion, the hydroxide ion, the nitrate ion, the phosphate ion, and the sulfate ion, which are all negatively charged polyatomic anions. The most important polyatomic cations, those with a positive charge, include the ammonium ion, NH4+, and the hydronium ion, H3O+. In terms of naming the compounds formed from combinations of all these ions, we've already said we name the cation first, followed by the name of the anion. So let's look at an example. If a potassium ion and an oxide ion come together to form an ionic compound, we can use the crisscross method and we will get the chemical formula K2O, but more importantly the name here is just potassium oxide. The K plus ion is a type 1 metal cation and is therefore simply named the potassium ion. There are no Roman numerals required. It's a type 1 metal cation. The O2 ion is named the oxide ion, so the name of the compound is simply potassium oxide. In this case here, we've got the CO2 plus ion and the nitrate polyatomic ion coming together to form an ionic compound. Now CO or cobalt is a transition element. It sits in the middle part of the periodic table and is therefore a type two metal. It has two different charges. It can be CO2 plus or CO3 plus. In this case, we're dealing with the CO2 plus ion, which has the name cobalt two. As I said, the polyatomic anion is the nitrate ion, something we just have to remember at this stage. When we put these two ions together, we get the name of the ionic compound to be cobalt 2 nitrate, which has the chemical formula of CONO32, which we can get using the crisscross method from a previous video.